Welcome to Project Pack number 16, day 11, and this is also day 11 of the 12 Days of Zentangle. Hi. My, my name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria, and today we're going to shake it up a little. <laughs> uh, we're going to work with a tan Zentala or Renaissance Zentala and a black Zentala. Uh, I'm just appreciating the texture of the paper, which I just love, and in it, and Renaissance Centala is my favorite canvas, and I tend to do a lot of things on there. So when the girls uh, said, yeah, you're going to get this one, I said, this would be good. Yeah, and it really has no up and down or right or left. It's So we're going to mark off four corners. Uh, the, I think Rick did the same. You did it the same yeah. way, huh? And this was genius, right? So you put uh, a a square tile behind you, and then just mark off in the middle of those little nibbits that are sticking out, and you got a perfect... Uh, like well, divided in fours. Divided into four as perfect yeah. as we need it. It's not doesn't have to be perfect. It perfect just, dish. Yeah. Perfect dish. I like that. So we're going to uh, draw some lines here and some arcs. And, and I'm going to the... the, uh, the Pencil towards towards the end, you know, to the closest to the edge. That's where I want to. I want the line to go. And our goal here is to use all of the materials as much as we can in the project pack to do the project pack. Right. And there's a few extra things that we use in this, um, but you, you'll see it if you uh, watch through the whole um, project. And also, you can get a sense. By, if you haven't already, to please watch the intro video. Okay. So now we're going to take another Zendala and place it uh, where it's touching that line, that we do, those little lines that we just used, and we're going to draw that beautiful arc in four places. And she's doing it face down, so if... if like me, you uh, go on to the Zendali. You don't have a, a marked marked on the front. Right. So with our handy-dandy scoring tool, I'm going to use the larger ball uh, on, on the scoring tool. And with a heavy hand, uh, we're going to go on these lines that we just drew. And Maria's background there is a slight, it's not very t totally hard. It's like a matte board. Right, it's like a, a suede mat board. So there's a little bit of sponge there um, as opposed to like a hard table. Uh, I, f I feel like it, it's better like if you could work on cork or on a, a writing board, right? And you can, you know, you can try this and explore maybe on another tile or different material. You might be using different material than us. And, and sometimes like a dish towel, a couple of right. layers of dish towel would do it. And if you don't have a scoring device, you may actually have one, like a, a knitting needle, crochet, uh, end of a uh, uh, fork or spoon. And a, and a, a ballpoint pen that doesn't work anymore. Yeah, that or works a jelly too. roll pen that doesn't work. So that roller ball would, would uh, work just fine. We're going to delineate these arcs with a pencil. And um, just to kind of give you a sense of where we're going, we might go back and forth and end up doing things that you uh, maybe hadn't anticipated or maybe you did. Sort of a version of dot and border going in here, right, dot right. border string. And turning her tile each time and matching the curve with what's the easiest way for your hand to draw that curve. Now, again, I'm going to uh, draw this uh, aura on the inside of this arc. Usually I would turn the, the tile the other way, but I, I, I'm I more apt to want to go in that curve feel with my hand. So right. now we have, you, that looks great That's just still, there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm using my O1 graphic uh Gra Micron. Micron 01 and uh, black. Put a, a, a nice orb. It doesn't have to be in the center. I'm, I'm not a center person, so I usually kind of go off mm. center a little bit. 
put a few orbs. And I think that uh, what we end up with was, you know, maybe the size of um, the like top of the pen a little bit bigger. Right. I'm going to put some ball bearings in here. That's what it reminds <laughs> me of, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And just, I love how you do that, that idea of just squishing it in so that it's, it's going over the lines that hold it and also over the lines of the one next to it. Really fits it. Nice. Looks like those old jewelry pieces that you collect. Mm -hmm. So we're going to uh, spin around that ball bearing like an S shape uh, and, and you'll try to hit the corners. So it's like a slight S shape. And you see how she's taking off in the sense that she's slightly retracing that orb. This is uh, a, a version of Fengal. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it in a while. This was kind of fun to go back and revisit this, this tangle. It was wonderful. Did it a lot for a while there. So now I'm going to uh, do four more of these little curved S lines, but we're going to go behind those pencil lines. So in a hollow ball fashion, just drawing underneath. Mm -hmm. I'm putting a dot there because sometimes it's easier to uh, shoot for that um, spot if you have something to look at. But that's, that's your choice. Right. And again, turning the turning the tile, so you're using the same uh, hand motion each time. So even if yours don't look like Maria's, they will look like themselves when you turn your tile like that. Kind of spidery, huh? Mm. So now we're going to backtrack to about halfway to uh, the existing um, lines there, y you go back, back, you know, like, I, I don't know how else to say it, backtrack. And we're going to go with each one of these lines, okay. we're going to shoot for that middle point, give it a little bit of a curve, kind of a graceful. Again, drawing behind. So those ones that are to the outside are the ones we're bringing in because the other ones are sort of already under that border. Really nice sort of petaling effect. So these here, we're just going to uh, continue it on that pencil line that we had drawn earlier. Sort of restating mm -hmm. that line. Mm -hmm. And you can explore which direction of making these lines you like, going from bottom to top, top to bottom. So we have a spinning uh, fangle here. It looks like it's going to take off if we blow on it, right? Right. <laughs> like those little, uh, what are they called? Uh -oh. Pinwheels. Pinwheels, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're going to uh, throw a little orb in, in the center point of mass, what, uh, like where the, where you imagine a, it might balance, it maybe. might balance, yeah. yeah. And we're going to spin these lines in the other direction. The the first ones were S shapes, and this one is more like a a, a number nine. And again, even though that starting point is really small, just she's wrapping that line around it just a bit, a little bit of takeoff. Hollow ball to the end. So now then you can still see we're still doing number nines. Going to the center. So on each one of those shapes, we're going to do it 
or Maria's going to do it into all three corners. Mm -hmm. And you can see that she's doing each similar stroke on each one. And uh, you may decide to do all three in each one. But sometimes I think you get to have a sense of the impact when you do just one all the way around. So this, this round, you can see that we're going to the corner. There's only one corner there in each one of those triangular shapes. And that number nine is going to end up, it's, it's just, this is a beautiful uh, way to do fangle. Sort of like introducing well concepts into fangle. Yes, yes. They're pretty, huh? Well, now you have all those beautiful internal, like, reticula to put things in. So we're looking at this uh, this one image right here. This uh, it's what, what kind of a shape is that? Right. So I think so. Picking out which one of these we're going, Maria's going to work on. So with the t with the tip pointing down, we're coming uh, like off that center hub, and we're going to fill that triangu triangular shape with these lines that are coming from that central hub, just giving it a little bit of character. And notice how she's weighting the line towards the end. How, see how it's thicker, and you can do that on this paper by a combination of pressure and slowing down. I like that. So again, we're going to um, uh, find the uh, one that's pointing down here and, and take that section and start from the hub and go for that uh, the bead. So essentially, it's skipping, skipping from the perspective right, of the right. center, sp skipping <laughs> excuse right. me, each one. Though that might even be a better focus if you skip one space. Right? And what's really cool is, like, e no matter what you do, even if it's a little different than what Maria did, just keep repeating it, and it becomes the new pattern. It becomes the new normal, yep. And you might discover something that I missed. And that's happened many times before, so don't, don't fear the mistake. You don't fear the mistake. You look for the opportunity that it presents to you. And as we often say, our objective here is not to have you duplicate exactly what Maria is creating, but to create something that only you can create. And this is just a nice jumping off spot. Right? Pretty That's beautiful. It's, it's giving some uh, momentum. It looks like it's uh, spinning or something. I love that. Well, I, I love that alternating texture. It's beautiful. Oh, look, you can see it up in the left corner of my blotter. See? Oh, right. Sort of like that, right? Yeah. Now, we're going to um, find the backgrounds in, in each corner, there's a space that's the background, and we're going to fill that in with black. And, and take your time. Don't go fast. Just really enjoy coloring in, thinking about when you were a kid and had a new box of crayons, mm -hmm. how wonderful it was to just fill in spaces. I can remember that. I, I'd al I always colored the laying on my belly. And the smell. The smell of a new box of crayons. Wow. For me, that was better than apple pie. And you can explore different ways of filling in, uh, turning your tile, filling the outside first, then filling the inside. And again, this is not something to rush through, like Maria said. Just really enjoying it. So we got some nice drama there. And I'm uh, going over those lines that uh, delineate that in internal shape. What would you call that shape, Rick? Right, that's like a, a concave square. A concave square. square. With 
I'm sure that there's a name for that yeah. shape. If anybody can yell out to us, we might in hear the it comments, down here. Right, in the basement. <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> right, and you can re-sculpt those in some, some cases. Just those little extra touches of love. So I'm restating uh, those curved pencil lines and, and uh, going around that half circle. Is that like a semicircle yeah. kind of thing? Semicircle. And uh, auraing those shapes. Making sure you're going to stop when you get to that uh, down in the corners so that you can get your uh, right, get auras, the molding yeah, in the there. Molding in. That aura like molding. So it's sort of like what is it called? That what that type of window that is half uh, curved eyebrow, above eyebrow, dormer, eyebrow window. Like a, uh, well, it's the dormer. palladium window. Is that it? Palladium. I can't remember. Maybe. And then again, it's a square window, it. and then with the, the palladium right. at the top, yeah. So we're doing the same thing now on this uh, the the complementary uh, semicircle. It's like one of those seed shapes in uh, bales. Yes. Right? Yeah. Look at that! It's already starting to look fun. Very cool. And just appreciating each step as you're going along. This is not, okay, I want to finish this and get it done. It's, it's the joy of doing it. So we're going to do uh, a bunch of tipple, which I love the, uh, the, the um, background and texture mm. that uh, tipple does. But I always usually, well, I usually have a method to how I put it down because I like to create a pattern within the pattern. So what I do is I start out with one orb that's bigger than the others, and then I start putting down a, a series a little bit smaller around them and then keep getting smaller and then go to go to another one. And then you put the background of the little tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny orbs that kind of holds it all together as a pattern. And it ends up looking like a, like a reptile skin, you know, like with yeah. larger and yeah, smaller yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. components. Beautiful. There's nothing like that beautiful, you know, those uh, like alligator mm -hmm. or re reptile. I think it's more like a reptile yeah. like you're talking about. It's beautiful. And the colors. Oh. So I'm bouncing around here, putting the big one first and then adding the different shapes, and then I'm going to go in when I'm comfortable with that and add the small ones to uh, kind of set them off. This is a great exercise to teach kids. Um, and, you know, and even, I mean, I just love to do it. I mm -hmm. love the, uh, the repetition, and I don't have to think about it, and it, the, it's beautiful. And this is like pattern as texture, and whether it's, you know, like even in your sink when you, you know, see soap bubbles, there'll be bigger ones and smaller ones and then smaller ones around the bigger ones and mm -hmm. very, very similar to this. So you could exaggerate this even more. So now I'm going in with the little t tiny ones. Mm -hmm. And it almost looks like a Bronx cheer, a, a continual Bronx cheer. Right, right. And uh, don't be afraid to add love to some uh, orbs that maybe need a little bit of uh, attention. sculpting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I do that all the time. Sometimes you don't get it, get it the way you want it the first time around. And you can see how, as they all tie together, there's like this ebb and flow of size, and yet they all meet in a very organic way. It's a very enjoyable uh, like background, adding, a, adding some texture. We should name this, and I've never done that mm. before. This uh, just... Uh, and it, uh, it does well with shading, you know, because right. you can create uh, effects 
uh, right. depending on how you want that to disappear or appear. So we're going to do this on all four of these little windows. And again, taking your time. And, you know, an, an interesting exploration as you're doing this, if you're drawing your orbs clockwise, well, try it counterclockwise or vice versa. So we're, we're going to fill the, the, uh, the more central uh, semicircles, the ones that have those arms coming out. The other, uh, we won't put this particular tangle in, leave those blank. So in this case, Maria started all of the uh, large ones, and just, just to show you just a different approach. They are kind of like soap bubbles, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine, you know, where we find tangles in this kitchen sink. Right. So now doing, doing the dishes has another whole thing. You can study the right. bubbles. Inspiration. Yeah. How pretty is that, right? So you've got these different layers of texture. You've got circular. You've got um, those lines. You have solid. So we're going to um, uh, drop some uh, double lines in each one of the outer semicircles, uh, and they don't have to be exactly, exactly right. But if you start in the middle, you, it gives mm. you a, a fighting chance. <laughs> Close enough. Might be looking at it at an angle. And again, that notice how Maria changes the the pressure on her pen, and that may or may not be your style, but it's her style. I wanted to have something. Uh, uh, linear for this t for this uh, part because there were so many curves in the others, and and Rick and I talk about uh, phi ratios mm -hmm. and proportions, and um, one of the things somebody I don't know if we read it or somebody else said that you could use those proportions with light and dark, mm -hmm. you know, one third, two thirds light and dark either way, or one third, two thirds uh, curvy and straight. Right. Uh, you can work with the color that way, light and dark, um, all kinds of things. Those proportions in art right. are so important that they show up. And if you look at a, a really, really beautiful painting, you'll notice one third of it is dark and the other two thirds are light or vice versa. And you can start noticing these proportions everywhere. It, it gets you to analyze paintings in a whole new way. So after she has done those straight lines inside, then now this is called coff coffering, which is to connect those like molding. Connect the corners, right. yeah. This is a beautiful architectural um, effect, right? In windows or in um, uh, cement or, or stone or... And now what you end up doing is creating this. It becomes dimensional even by this. You can just imagine them like faceted as a jewel going up or faceted as molding going down. And a lot of times we say, okay, you know, doing the auras at a, at a consistent gap but at the same time, you can use that and extremely, you know, contrast, like we were saying, this proportion of balance between uh, thin auras and thicker auras. But look what that does right? in terms of detail. Um, it, uh, it just makes things look more, you know, just more complex or more detailed, more... Uh, like you put more time into it. And I'm looking, I've always looked at that as if it was like going down like a molding, but now I'm looking at it, it's like it's going up as a jewel. Mm -hmm. That's true, it could be that way too. Right? Like a, a, a square cut diamond, mm -hmm. or, or right? So, so <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you can see I took a new tortillon and I'm marking it for, for this to be a, a new white smudger so that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, have any uh, graphite on it. 
And that lasts just for so long because right. they all become dark ones. But y y this helps you to remember that this is a white tortillon. At least starting out that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you can like decorate them and you can have a I collection can of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> Can and, and it does no sayer <laughs> surface that's safe in our house. Right. You, you guys can't even imagine um, how you can add right. to a, a, a thought. To a surface. Yeah, yeah. Now with the graphite pencil, we're going to add some uh, shading in that uh, uh, those, those parts that we put the stripes in. And you can work with the... the uh, the ink lines, like where it is, is the the closest together. That's already dark, so you can like enhance that a little bit, mm -hmm. like we did on the uh, paradox on day two, I think. Yeah. So we're going to add some graphite. Uh, uh, how do I describe that? At, at where the ed ends of those stripes are. And sort of like imagining them folding over and under the, uh, the one next to it. Right. And she's putting that down pretty thick because we know we're going to come back with the tortillon and, and uh, smooth it out. Hopefully I won't grab the, the new white one, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and pause. You me thinking, right? Yeah, pause and, and communicate with your tile, you know, because it's, it's going to offer like, okay, this is, this is the direction that I'm now wanting to go. Uh, even if you had an idea when you were starting, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this. Maria is very responsive to the new realities of the tile, and that's, well, that's why I left that in. It. I like that. You know, and and you can have a an, an an initial inspiration, but then be responsive. So here we are adding uh, graphite to those uh, windows with the tipple in there, um, and uh, I wanted those to sort of set back. Uh, be behind. And so it really enhances that dimensionality. And of, as we always say, you know, the, the whole point of shading is that there's some parts that are left unshaded. So you have that, again, uh, right. contrast. You know, you could you could cover the whole background, and we do in some cases as as a texture. But um, contrast makes that up and down highlights more obvious. Don't be afraid to look at your tile as you go along and um, make decisions that you wouldn't have made, like Rick said, to, because your tile changes. Every, every time it goes around in a, you know, in a turn, it's a different tile. Mm -hmm. And I love that. It, that's such a wonderful metaphor you know, for day-to-day -day stuff is that, well, you, you start with an idea and you're doing everything with, with best intentions and then new data comes. So with new data, there's new opportunities, new variables. Ooh, the white. Right, and this is th the beauty of this mid-tone paper is you can add light as well as add dark. So we've been waiting to put something there on those, um, on those stripes that are kind of popping out. Nice. And it's just that, that simple... Uh, if you look at Renaissance, which is why we called it Renaissance paper, like Renaissance sketches, they would use this mid-tone and just create the most dynamic uh, sketches of what their work was going to be. We were working a project um, uh, 
based on Da Vinci's Codex. So if you get a chance, just uh, go online and look at some images of Da Vinci's Codex, and a lot of them will use that uh, technique. So where the highlight would be of that, um, those various pieces, just adding some white. And the, uh, the white and the uh, graphite will blend really nicely together. And keep your sharpener, your, uh, your larger sharpener, uh, close by, because the white tends to... Uh, go down faster than the graphite pencil, and you have to sharpen it more often, I find. Ooh, so that, that little thing right there is, you know, you know that it's curving under. Just catching the light a bit. And the light and shadow that we do is more a function of pattern rather than, oh, if there was a light source, what would be in shadow or what would not be in shadow, etc. So I love to do this, especially on a textured background. I like to um, just put white right over it. And what's happening is it's bringing in another color mm. into your piece on, it, on either a white tile or um, on a gray tile. It, it almost makes it look like that it's a white tile that you're working on, you know. And it does something different to that. Uh, look at that. that. <laughs> that, that, that that's like crazy, right? It lights it up. It's a great technique because the, the ink behind it, you know, comes through in this translucent. It's like a translucent cover. Beautiful. And in some ways, it, what she's doing with the tortillon is more moving the, the, the charcoal into the paper fibers as well as smoothing it out. But... Okay, so now with my graphite pencil, I'm going to go uh, make those arms pop out a little bit more. Those, uh, I don't know what else to call those. Right. Fins or whatever. It does look like a fin. Yeah. Right? Dorsal fin. Yeah. And this is a, it's a good example because, you know, we plan these tiles for these projects ahead of time, but the ones that we do when we actually record it, they're always different from the original plan. Right, right. It's that idea of just responding to the tile as it develops. So we're going to put some uh, some white in these uh, window panes. Or, or is that what you would, what yeah, would you call it? Yeah, that's what like I the thought windows? they were yeah, originally. Like yeah, like windows. And like this, you can like see that. the uh, outdoors, the clouds coming through. Right. If I had a, a turquoise pencil, I'd be putting <laughs> clouds in there. Uh, but we're only working in black and white here. So with our graphite pencil, we're going to put some uh, graphite on the left-hand uh, board on on the on the little frames there, and the dot and the bottom one. But whichever two you choose. It's fine. It's fine. So it would be like an L shape, right? Yeah. And again, this is shading as pattern element because obviously it wouldn't be like this on if and this reality, were if right? this were a real thing. Yeah, the light source is going in four different directions. Right. But that's what I love about shading in Zentangle is that just you know just do it. Right. <laughs> just do it. Right, so we have to go back in and miter those corners. Yeah, uh, I missed her. For all of you who have been waiting and I wondering know. what is <laughs> she missed one. She, she missed forgot one. it. She forgot it. No worries. <laughs> go back and get that, and then put in the all of the shading. Right. Actually, I love doing that because when you working on something and you want to do a particular thing on repetitively, there's always that search and hunt to find if you've got all of the pieces.
Yeah, this is where the tortillon really shines right, in, right. In, in smoothing and filling that section. And it gives it a different color, mm-hmm. uh, a different color, different texture. It softens it. Yeah. Uh, it makes a big difference. That's really cool. Now I'm going to go in and add a little love here and there, especially when you're you're doing a lot of white chalk. Uh, I I go in and and uh, get the edges uh, a little crisper. Right, because it's uh, and. We'll do that also with, uh, even with the gray ink, I mean with the uh, charcoal, let me get my mm-hmm. words correct, the graphite will uh, sort of subdue the black lines. You can go put the black back over the graphite. And you might not notice it, but look at the difference that makes. It's all these little tiny things that you do as, as an artist as opposed to a technician, mm. um, that make your uh, compositions sing. And using a, the tortillons always at a really low angle. Leaving a little highlight. Going in and adding a little bit more shading under that arc. Right, because you had put the, uh, the the white charcoal right, over right. the original shading. Yeah, so you can go back and forth and layer this multiple times. All right, just checking in each time. I like that center black bead with the highlight. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. Now, why did we put the, or why did Maria put those scores in? Uh, so we're going to fold uh, the, the straight line ones up towards you. Already, already looks kind of cool, right? And now we're going to carefully uh, bend. The, uh, the curves in the other direction, so towards the back. So this, this fold is very similar to the one that you did on the second day with that, those, uh, Zendala, that Zendala box the we ornament, made, yeah. the ornament. <clears throat> so you can see I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of molding and, and sculpting this, this uh, piece. And doing it a little bit each time, so you don't have to do the entire fold. We're just working with it, understanding how the, you know, the limits of the paper are. That's right, and getting a feeling for it. So it's it's got some. Uh, uh, a, it, it looks architectural. Yeah, it's a little dome shape coming Almost up there. Almost like a like a ro- a rose design on the middle. Right. So Maria. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me explain this. So we do these things. Uh, uh, ahead of time and then we go back and comment on them and we're all, while we're filming them we turn the camera on and off and get up and answer the door or get up and answer the phone or whatever and sometimes we forget to put the camera back on to press record so <laughs> press record and uh, i when i was showing this on the piece that we just drew on i had forgotten to turn it back on so i created another shape like this to show you how the glue was done but in essence I've already done it once before. And so she's done two flaps, not all four. She's just done two flaps. I'm not sure how, what the, uh, the, the timing is on this particular glue and how much time you have between the time you put it on and the time it will still stick. Mm. So I wanted to do just the two first. And you can see how I'm, I'm showing some of the black. Now, this is the key on there. Right. You want black showing because it's going to push the middle up. Right. That's, that's what's going to cause this to uh, come up in the middle, right? To have some to uh, make it sh- dimensional, dimensional, which is the theme of this whole series. So you can see the way the light is, how that is pushing up, and using our wonderful clamp uh, paper clips here, so we'll technical, hold those, huh? right? 
Do you know that they're called trombones? Yes. I love that because right. if you look at them, they do look like a right. trombone. So we've got those two sides clamped. And now Maria's going to do one. Do some adhesive on just one. And then we'll get that one clamped. Well, now we have to push that. If you can see me pushing it so right. that they, you have that black showing. See, it has to have that black showing. And about the same amount. And have that idea of the black as an aura. So I just took a rag and um, kind of took some of that glue off. But you can use like a paper towel or whatever. I always have rags on the, on the table. Put your trombones down. Right. Now here is the key here. If we just have too much fun with this. I know. What do we put inside <laughs> this piece? So we decided we're going to put some uh, uh, coffee beans. Uh, but you could put macaroni or rice or uh, lentils or anything yeah. of those kinds of things. Um, and also, you could put things that smell good, some mm -hmm. lavender. Mm. I would suggest putting the, uh, the rice and the, the, the little shake, up, shake it up things in and the lavender. All together. Right. That would be really nice. The coffee right. actually smells pretty good. Yeah, this coffee smells pretty good. But uh, I like the idea of shaking it up. If you had right. lavender in there, you would awaken it every once in a while right. so that you right. can... Um, get to smell how beautiful it is. I also think that you can spray a scent, you know, perfume or men's cologne or whatever it is you want to put on a, a paper towel or some mm. little piece of cloth and stick that in there too. Shake it up every once in a while and we're going to put some holes on the top so that you can actually right. smell what's inside. And again, you see how Maria's pushed that in so it's got the same gap all around. And you want to you want those corners where they come together to to seal. So you can see me pushing them down with my nails, uh, and and they stay actually pretty well. Right, and you can really appreciate the three dimensional there. Right, and the cool sounds. So here we go. We have a little tambourine. We call it a tambourine, <laughs> and uh, so that's how. And time barine, you could put some time in it. We could put time. You could put uh, 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 any kind of not basil, but uh, um, oregano. Anything right. that that makes sense for your family or makes whatever. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm. Yeah, the tea. So here we have the. the it's a shaker. You can hear it. Um, and we're going to uh, pierce this. Right. I, I have a, a kind of a fat. Uh, needle but uh, i'm sure a nail would do uh, if you can yep. see how big the, the 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 end is and i'm just kind of sticking it where those circles were between uh the well the well well right the well inside the fangle <laughs> right the well inside the fangle here there and the, and it's actually just enough to let the scent out yeah and you can do it in the middle too and so you've got this, this auditory treat, this visual treat, this um, so, olfactory treat. Yeah, I'm taking that, uh, uh, the, the scoring device and just making those holes maybe just a tiny bit bigger. Taking your time, don't, you don't want to rip that or anything and still kind of shaking around. It's really cool, right? Right. And there's one thing I had forgotten to do. Here is the, the white... Uh, jelly roll and I just wanted to brighten those black spots a little bit and it reminds me of a starry sky a starry mm. night right and then I went into the middle of the uh, the um, that uh, ball bearing the ball bearing and added some highlights there too and here's my chop this is a really fun one. This was a fun one, and, and I, I <laughs> love the idea that, don't forget that you can always go back, even the next day, if you have an idea in the middle of the night, right. which is what happens to me. Very architectural. Yeah. With the, really I love fun. the I love the, co the contrast of the, of the straight lines and those curved fangle. Yeah. So thank you so much for playing with us again, and uh, we look forward to what you create yeah, and seeing it. I can't wait to see it. Awesome. Bye see now. Bye.